What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. This is a follow-up video, or uh, kind of a goes together with video, to Rich Piana's video about the anabolic diet. Now, I've talked about keto many times, and I use keto in some of my diets. I've used it myself. I use it with clients sometimes. But you know, you forget. Like this is a diet that came out probably in the early '90s, um, Dr. Morrow of Deeds Pasquale, and it's kind of been shifted around and changed. And he's changed it to the metabolic diet now, which is his newest incarnation of the uh, the anabolic diet. But um, I studied this extensively and used it extensively when I was a natural bodybuilder as a teenager. And um, so did my training partner, so did my girlfriend at the time. Um, it came hand in hand with the Big Beyond Belief training system. Now, Optimum Training Systems was a company that built the Bulgarian Burst Training System. They went over to the Eastern Bloc country of Bulgaria and they learned how to do micro periodization. They came back with this program. And they also noticed that they were eating a lot of meats and not a lot of carbs. So, at this point, you know, everything was very carb-based. They had an Atkins diet, which was kind of similar, but there was really no basis on, like, how you could control this to be a bodybuilder because they were Olympic lifting over in Bulgaria. So, Vince McMahon of the WWE, then the WWF, World Wrestling Federation, decided he was going to start the World Bodybuilding Federation, the WBF, okay? And what he did was he contracted a bunch of bodybuilders from... Um, the IFBB brought them over there, paid them large sums of money to be sponsored, changed it into more of like a wrestling um, kind of flamboyant, flashy, showman-like added to bodybuilding type thing. So it was like the wrestling and bodybuilding were jammed together, and that's how this came together. Now, at the same time, Vince McMahon had been busted for supplying steroids to his wrestlers, and Hulk Hogan took the stand and testified against them, and it was a big fucking mess. So the whole idea, and steroids had become illegal, I think, in 1991 or 1990 or something like that. May have been earlier than that. Anyways, it was before I started fucking around, so I don't know. So they were looking for an alternative to steroids. Now they had stuff like cybergenics and these supplements that were coming out, but nothing really took the place of steroids. Now Mauro Di Pasquale, who is Dr. Mauro Di, Mauro Di Pasquale, along with uh, Fred Hatfield, they were had their hands in all kinds of stuff, very scientific stuff, doing studies about all kinds of stuff. He was very smart with the diet. He figured he could harness growth hormone naturally and insulin naturally and testosterone naturally if you could manipulate the hormones of the body using food, using diet, which is what I talk about all the time. The manipulation of hormones through food. And he came up with the anabolic diet. Now, the way it works, you can get this diet still online, but I literally think the book, last time I looked for it, because I lost it throughout the years, I still have my Big Beyond Belief books. Those books go for $700 fucking dollars a piece. And there's a free PDF online, but the actual book itself is such a collector's item that's expensive. And I think the anabolic diet is like $400 to actually get the book. And I'm sure there's a PDF somewhere for the anabolic diet. Now, when uh, they started trying to figure out how do we get these guys off steroids and just keep them still looking like IFBB competitors and top pro bodybuilders, he decided that what he would do is do a ketogenic diet during the week and on the weekend carb load. Now, the beginning of the diet to drop into deep ketosis, and he didn't recommend using the keto sticks because if you're burning your ketones while you're working out and training and breathing and doing everything that you're doing, you're not going to have ketones that show up in your piss. They shouldn't be there, which means you shouldn't show ketones even though you're in ketosis. So the way that he kind of guaranteed you were in ketosis is he would go 14 days with no carbs. So the first two weeks you had no carbs. When you came up to the end of that, or it was 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 days no carbs. So that first weekend that you're on the diet, you don't carb up. The second weekend you finally carb up. And he had a list of uh, foods that you could eat. He had uh, caloric um, charts that you could piece stuff together based on where you know your body weight was. And he explained how to do it. It was like your body weight times 1.25 times 16 would be you know protein to gain mass. And, I mean, he had all the equations in there on how to do it. And uh, me and my training partner Donnie and my girlfriend Kathy at the time had uh, we were into I, me and Donnie went to competing naturally, and Kat was just you know she was training with us. She was at the gym. She was just into it. So we decided we we're all going to use this diet. Now, you get this diet together and you're eating meat, you're eating, I would eat stuff like steak. You would put steak in the Tupperware and put, you'd weigh out butter and put butter on it. That was your fat and your proteins. Like, you would have stuff like that on this diet. And um, Mauro Di Pasquale said that, you know, you can use sugars. It was a very, very IFOM-based diet. I mean, this is back in fucking 92 or something. And he said that you can use sugars, you can use fucking grape juice, you can use McDonald's, you can use whatever the fuck you want to carb load on the weekends. But there's a catch. You have to know... When your body, because you, your body actually doesn't really come out of ketosis on the weekend. So even though you're filling up those glycogen stores, you're pushing insulin up, you're using all those carbs and more protein, everything's getting shoved into the muscles, your body's still burning ketones. It doesn't actually shift out of the ketos, ketosis metabolism for a little bit longer than that day and a half or two days that you're, uh, you're carb loading. So 
if you ate certain carbs like sugary carbs, you would carb load faster and come out of ketosis. Now, the way that you figured out how you were out of ketosis, here's what's interesting. It wasn't a keto stick. It wasn't a blood test. You would feel it. You could eat rice, potatoes, brown rice. You could eat pasta. You could eat um, any kind of complex of oatmeal. And you would feel still flat. Like you wouldn't fill up Saturday. Sunday would start to fill up a little bit towards the end of the day. And then you'd feel kind of full at the end of the day. And then you're back on the diet on Monday, back in ketones. Now, with the sugar, like we used to use grape juice. That's one that we experimented with. And grape juice is high glycemic. And we were reading these things about the creatine being used, with the high glycemic, and mix it with grape juice. So we're like, we'll load it faster. We'll take creatine with it. By the end of Saturday, you're bloated already. Like you already feel like you do Sunday night at the end of Saturday. Now, you have to go back to the ketone part. You have to cut the carbs back out and go back into ketosis again a day early. So it gave me the availability to be like, oh, I can eat whatever the fuck I want. I can eat pizza. I can eat grape juice. I can drink soda. I can do whatever I want. But when that body starts to make that shift back, you have to stop, which now you have to have discipline. So even though it so, seems so easy, you still have to be disciplined and honest with yourself about how your body's responding because you're the one getting the results. So you only get out what you put into it. So for a while we did... um the high fatty foods. So it was like literally McDonald's and we had that, that eating window for the weekends. It was like McDonald's, pizza, pasta, whatever, you know, and it would keep the, the sugars to a minimum. And within a couple weeks, you noticed your body weight, you would, you would go down like five, six pounds during the week. You'd come up five, six pounds on the weekend. By the time you get back down to the, the keto again in the next week, you notice that your body weight was about the same, but you were a little bit leaner. And we weren't doing cardio. There's no cardio involved with the diet. So now, you know, of course, we're teenagers, so we're sitting there trying to figure out, well, how far can you push this thing? You know, what are, the, what are the actual parameters? So I think I was about 170 pounds, and I was leaning out. I was getting bigger. I was getting stronger. All completely natural. Never touched a drug at this point. And this was like a, a diet that I was going to use to compete in a competition. And I was eating, I was working at Bally's at the time. I was eating the steak and the butter and all that stuff. And then, you know, Donnie and I decided that we were going to try loading with some of the higher glycemic stuff just because we wanted to eat it. We didn't even really fucking understand the higher glycemic shit. We were eating going, I don't know what this is, but donuts sound good today. So we were eating fucking donuts. And I remember Al Thurston, who was helping us prep before we learned about this diet, came in. I was like, what the fuck are you guys doing? We're carb loading. He's like, you guys are fucking idiots. Like, that's not going to work. But you eat the donuts and crappy food like that, you load faster. But now in our mind was like, hey, let's see if we can push it a little further to you know, gain a little more mass. Like you think you're gaining a whole bunch of muscle on the weekend, which you're just filling up with carbs and water. You don't realize it. So we'd actually go a little bit too far and you would come out of ketosis and it would take you longer to get to ketosis the following week when you drop down. And at that point, you're not getting the fat loss that you wanted. And you're like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm stagnant. The diet's not working. Well, looking back on it afterwards, years when I learned about things, I realized that we just fucked the diet up. It was working. Now, it's great for some people. Some people it's not. But it's a diet. Okay? It takes regimen. It takes the you know everything to be set up in a row and you need to follow it you need to be honest with it you need to be honest with yourself and you need to know that it's not a free-for-all it's not whatever the fuck you want to eat it's not i don't have to weigh my fucking food it's not i don't have to count my macros it's like yes you have to count your fats and proteins your macros during the week none of the weekend you drop the fats down you almost don't even eat any fats we still eat them anyways but you just eat carbs and when you get that feeling of bloatedness now it's time to switch to the keto again you go back to weighing your meals out go back to what you're doing and, you know, I've developed throughout the years uh, a kind of a process. And Dan Duchesne had a very cyclic, ketogenic cyclic diet, too, that um, was with, uh, I believe it was the ultimate diet he had. He had a workout that went with it. And, you know, this anabolic diet went with the Optimum Training Systems Big Beyond Belief. Like, they talked about it in the Big Beyond Belief book. The other company published it, Optimum Training System, and they went together. So we were using both things together. And as teenagers, we were pretty fucking good. I mean, we were, you know, pretty good for around our area completely natural, hadn't taken anything, and, you know, people would obviously be like, hey, you guys are taking something, and we, we, we didn't, I mean, so it was absolutely working, but I've kind of adapted that throughout the years to understand that, you know, there are times where I can cut my carbs for five days, I can cut them for two days, I can cut them for ten days, I can cut them for a month, but there's going to be a point where I need to add the carbs back in, I need to know when I need to pull them back out, so, you know, it just depends on the individual, I mean, you know, I would load a lot slower than Cat would, Cat would actually load pretty fast, she was very carb sensitive, which means after a couple of meals, she was loaded of carbs and she had to go back on the diet while me and Donnie could still eat. Donnie, it took him longer to load. He had a faster metabolism. So it took him quite a long time to load. He could eat a lot more food than I could or cat and at the same time take him longer to load. So he could probably load till Monday and still wouldn't have been out of ketosis. So, you know, there's guidelines. It's a great diet. It's been around for a long time. I studied it for a long time. I actually used it for a long time. And I had people around me using it and we were doing it to the best of our ability. So I could say that we definitely have some insight that a lot of people, you know, would not have. 
but it's very cool. So check it out online. His name is Dr. Moral Di Pasquale. Di Pasquale, Di Pasquale, Di Pasquale, something like that. If you look him up, you'll find him. Um, the Anabolic Diet, and there's probably a free PDF out there somewhere. So biosetraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosetraining.com is a blog. I'm BioS3, and I approve this message, and we're out.